Hey guys, welcome to the final video in our little trilogy of creating two base classes where one of them is a normal base class and another one's an abstract base class and the creation of our derived class pyramid which will represent the three-dimensional version of triangle. So we just finished creating our abstract class shape 3D and now we're going to go about creating our pyramid class so pyramid.hpp and so since I'm going to be inheriting both from triangle and shape 3D I need to include their header files so first I include triangle and then I include shape 3D it actually doesn't really matter the um, sequence in which you incorporate these just as long as you include them before your declara declaration of the class and then here we go so I have my pyramid so this right now this looks like just some normal class but now I'm going to be doing my inheritance so first I'm going to inherit from triangle triangle and then I'm going to inherit from shape 3d and this is how I'm describe my inheritance from two different classes and of course if I was inheriting you know from five classes I could or four classes I can do like you know I can do public oh god public cube and like public rectangle right I can inherit from as many classes as, as I'd like to um, however you know pyramid doesn't make sense to inherit from cube and rectangle so I'm going to keep it just as triangle and shape 3d so what does this mean now well I've just inherited from these two classes and something that's going to be interesting now is that I actually don't need to declare any attributes because for my pyramid, I'm going to have my base and height, right? So typically I'd include my depth, width, and surface area. However, shape 3D is already including those attributes. So that's pretty neat because all I need to do is declare my constructors for pyramid. And this is quite a, a change of pace because now... I, ha I can do essentially less work and I'll have my parameterized constructor height and width I mean depth not width um, I'll have my copy constructor so already I'm saving some lines of code and of course this will be especially more useful if I kept inheriting from uh, shape 3d but uh, since I'm only doing these three classes uh, you know this I, I won't save too, too much code just because I'm not creating so many classes that inherit from shape 3D. But now that we're done with the constructors and the destructor, what's next? Well, what's next that I usually think of is going to be the getters. However, they're already taken care of by triangle with the getters for base, height, area, perimeter, and shape 3D having getters for depth, surface area, and volume. So that means all my getters are already taken care of. So what does that leave me with? Well, that leaves me with the setters. And I only really need to override the setters, right? So I need to override base so that I can update surface area and perimeter. So I need to override it. And then I have to do the same thing with height because as I update height, I will want to update surface area and perimeter. So override and then void I'm going to have my set depth which I'll override because the calculate the calculate surface area and calculate volume have not been defined yet and here's where I'm going to go about defining them so I'm going to say calculate area and that's going to be or surface area sorry about that surface area so I'll be overriding this virtual function and of course I need to do that by having the override keyword and I'm going to be doing the same thing for the volume calculate volume method as well so override right so here I'm overriding all my setters so what does that leave me with well it leaves me with declaring the equals operator for overloading that operator as well as going in and declaring my operator for the double equals with the again same actually same input as the equals operator and then doing the same thing but with the not equals operator because it's good if you define one of them you should always define the other and in the case of the equals and not equals operator well 
once when you define the first one it should be easy to implement the second one and then of course I have my friend function for printing with the double lingo brackets just because I really like printing with the double lingo brackets I mean you yourself you can go up here and, and have your own print method if you like you know you can have something like that that's totally fine you know there is nothing wrong with that but I myself I mean I like to use the double angle brackets of C++ just because I'm so used to them and I mean that's just the way I go about using them right but there's nothing wrong with that so that leaves it with the header file and we don't really implement much here it's half half of our methods or I guess I don't know a little under half of all the methods declared here they're all overrides right and that's because triangle and shape 3d will have done so much of the work for us so why don't we go now and we can implement our pyramid class so i'll save this and we will continue so pyramid.cpp and here we will need to include our pyramid.hpp and oops before i forget i need to include std io i mean io stream i'm thinking about c um, I need to include IO stream because I'm using the std O stream. Right, so always include that. I think I made that mistake for triangle, so I'm going to try not to repeat that. So here I have my include pyramid. I'm going to go about creating my constructors and creating these uh, constructors. Oops. Creating these constructors is going to be quite nice because now when I have this, I let triangle do its work and shape. 3d do its work and then all I need to do is calculate the surface area and then calculate the volume right uh, the implementation of this is just a little bit simpler because rather than calling you know a bunch of setters and having to initialize five parameters or five attributes I just have to call the constructor for triangle as well as the constructor for shape 3d and for the parameterized constructor I'm actually going to do the same thing I'm going to pass the parameters to triangle as a parameterized constructor and then this I'm gonna pass depth to shape 3d as a parameterized constructor and then I'm gonna go here and similar I'll just copy this all similar to all this Similar to the unparameterized constructor, I call calculate surface area and calculate volume, right? So, I mean, this is just so nice because I let my base classes do as much all the work for me. And I mean, that's the idea with object oriented programming is that you want these base classes to do pretty much as much work as you can for them. I mean, you these base classes, you got to put them to work. So I'm doing uh, the same thing here. I'm passing all my attributes to my base classes. And then finally, I have my surface area and volume get calculated. And when we get to the destructor, right, um, this is just going to be kept simple. I'm going to have my pyramid. And since I, I'm only working with static variables, I'm just going to have empty braces. Here. But in theory, right, you could have something like a base class that has dynamically allocated variables. And with that, well, you need to be more careful. So I'm, I kept it simple for this case. And we only have static variables so that things are, well, just kept simple because I don't want to add. I'm already introducing things like abstract classes and multiple inheritance with these series of classes and like that that can get really confusing um, but let's move on to the setters so here I just finished typing out my set base method which overrides the triangles version of set base and what this does is that well it cleverly calls the set base method for my triangle class and I pass I again kind of like with um, kind of like with the other methods I am passing off as much work as I can from my derived class to the base class and here I'm actually gonna get a little bit lazy and copy some of the stuff here so rather than have triangle with set rather than have triangle the triangle class be called here 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to have shape 3D be called, right? Because when it comes to the depth, is it going to be shape 3D that's going to have, have to deal with the depth attribute, right? So here, again, I am just leveraging the fact that pyramid inherits from both triangle and rectangle and that they have their own methods and that I can use them to do the heavy lifting while adding my own flavor, right? And that flavor being adding, you know, the calculation of surface area and volume in which I talk about that. Now let's go about calculate surface area and calculate volume. And here they are with all of their glory. So calculating the surface area of a pyramid is a little bit odd because, well, we essentially have um, four triangles that are mounted on a base and the four triangles are connected together. So the idea is, is that when I calculate the surface area of a pyramid, I need to get the bottom area first. And that's going to be the base times the depth. And when I get the forward back area, it's typically, I mean, imagine a pyramid facing you. And, you know, you're not viewing it from one of the angles where you can where you can see that it's three dimensional. Let's think about it from a perspective where you're facing in front of the pyramid and you really only see it as a triangle. Right. So that area is going to be the forward and back faces. And that's essentially going to be the area times two. And then the side area is going to be. Well, if you look at a pyramid in front of you, right, the side area is going to be the two sides, the two triangles on the pyramid that you can't see. So that's going to be my depth times height times one half, right, for each of the areas on each side. But because I'm counting both of those areas, it's just going to be depth times height. So with all of that, I, create, I have calculated the area for the five sides of my pyramid. So I add them all together and set them equal to surface area. And for volume, I if you guys do the integration of the area of a triangle, then, well, I mean, you look up, oops, the volume of a pyramid, it should be this. Right, and here, just the volume is just a mathematical calculation. Um, I think I just looked it up when I when I did this. Um, I didn't have to use logic for, for calculate surface area. But this leaves us for our methods. So again, I mean, what's a little bit weird here is that with set depth, set height, and set base, these are all just virtual functions that have been completely defined before in its parent classes like shape 3D and triangle. However, calculate surface area and calculate volume, they were complete abstract methods, meaning that they were declared in shape 3D, but they are defined here in pyramid by being a functional, I mean, a method override or function override. Well, it's an override, right? We overrided those methods so that way we can have our own implementation here. And the thing is, while the overloading of set base, set height, and set depth are optional, the overloading of calculate surface area and volume are not. This is due to calculate surface area and calculate volume being pure virtual methods while set depth, set height, set base are just virtual methods, right? So again, when you have a pure virtual method defined in a base class, the derived class must define it. Anyways, let's move on to our three operators. Finally, we have the friend function, which is the overloaded double angle brackets that is used to print with std c out. So I hope in me overloading these operators many, many times that this starts making a little bit sense to what's going on with them. And finally, um, actually, before we take a look at main, I actually want to take a quick detour towards my make file. So here I have um, the four see the four files that I want to compile main which going to, which is going to drive all the code as well as triangle which is a base class shape 3d which is a abstract base class and pyramid which is going to be my derived class and so one thing that I'm doing at the top here that's different from other make files that would look like this is that I'm actually creating like a variable here which is called GPP and this is to just compile GC, G++ with using the C++17 standard because uh, I'm doing some modern programming techniques with how I'm declaring my attributes and stuff like that. And so I use GPP as my compiling variable for all of these. And essentially what this all does is that this puts G++ dash stood equals C++17 
and all of these right so if you have like other flags that you're using and and you know or you're using a different standard maybe you're using c plus plus 14 or c plus plus 11 or c plus plus 20. this can be a a more effective way so that way i only need to type six characters rather than like i don't know 12 that's my guess 12 characters but anyways let's take a look at main so that way we can drive our code and the first thing that we need to do is not have triangle dot hpp but actually pyramid dot hpp so this will allow us to still use triangle because pyramid still includes triangle dot hpp and now i'll write some tests for pyramid and here we have our tests which look exactly the same as the tests for triangle the triangle class just because well we didn't really add any additional uh things that we can do with it any additional capabilities there's no like arithmetic operators like the addition subtraction multiplication or like other stuff like that so very simple tests so now let's hopefully see after all this code that if this program works Oh my goodness, look at this. This was a problem. I misspelled calculate for surface area. Oh man, that's rough. Okay, now I need to take a look at this. Let's go down here where I'm missing some initializer. What? Oh, operator, there we go. It all works. Just some typos. So now we have that. Oh, this is good. This feels great. We have our derived class as well as a normal functioning base class. And we have our, again, the derived class. But not only does it derive from one base class, but two of them. And one of those base classes is an abstract base class. What a good conclusion to creating these classes. And this is the premise of object-oriented programming, where you're leveraging the fact that you have other classes that can have some or have some or all use for information for a potential class, and you use it to make creating uh, future classes just a little bit easier. Thanks for watching.